Beloved, I want to welcome you specially to this week's edition of Cloud of Witnesses. Uh, we give glory to God for the honor and privilege He has granted us to witness yet another um, another week in this land of the living. May the name of the Lord be glorified forever in the name of Jesus. Like I always pray, uh, you will not cause God regrets for keeping you alive. The purpose in the heart of God for keeping you alive God will grant you the grace to align yourself with it and to be fulfilled to his glory in the mighty name of Jesus. Now we're going to continue our learning. We are still learning important faith and life lessons from the 42 characters mentioned in Hebrews 11. You know, last week we learned that God is a faith God. The first character we talked about last week is uh, God. We said we learned that God is a faith God. You know, he brings about what can be seen out of what cannot be seen. You know, remember we mentioned the fact that he wanted to create a beautiful universe and there was chaos, there was darkness. All he needed to do was to call forth what he wanted and what he did not want disappeared. He stood, he was looking at, I mean, he had, he had an intention, he wanted something and there were things present that were going to prevent what he wanted from happening. But he looked beyond those things and he called forth what he wanted and when what he wanted manifested, what he did not want disappeared. So that's the same uh, lesson we learned that God is a faith God. He didn't just believe, he spoke. You know, he called light and light came. And I want to believe somebody has been speaking since that period to now. You have been declaring your expectations regardless of contrary uh, circumstances. As you continue to practice that, the Lord will honor your faith and grant you desirable results in the name of Jesus. So this week, uh, we're going to be considering uh, another character. The second character we'll be considering this week is Abel. According to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 4. Hebrews 11, 4 talks about Abel. The Bible says, By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous. When God spoke well of his offerings, and by faith, Abel still speaks, even though he is dead. Hallelujah to Jesus. You know, one of the ways to confirm that uh, Abel is still speaking, even though he's dead, is this episode. He's speaking even in this episode, and he's long dead. So Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did, and God commended, that, uh, commended him. And they accounted him as righteous for doing that because he spoke well of his offerings. God had respect unto the offerings of Abel. And by reason of that faith, Abel still speaks even, even though he is dead. What can we learn from the life of Abel and with regards to the offering he gave to God and how God responded to the offering according to Hebrews 11.4? You know, for those of us who don't know Abel, Abel was the second son of Adam and Eve after they sinned and were banished from the garden of eden you know adam and eve the first parents they committed a sin they disobeyed god they listened to the devil they were deceived or probably they let themselves deceived and uh, god banished them from the garden of eden so they gave birth to uh to cain uh, firstborn then later on they gave birth to abel so abel was the second son of adam and eve after they had sinned and were banished from the garden of eden Eden, uh, and was a keeper of sheep. If you look at Genesis chapter 4, verse 2, Genesis chapter 4, verse 2, his profession was keeping sheep. Abel was a keeper of sheep. So, in the process of time, Abel brought an offering to the Lord, and God declared him righteous and right standing with him by reason of that offering on the account of that offering. Now, there are two elements worth considering as we attempt to understand. What made God commend Abel's offering? What was in that offering that attracted God's commendation? What was in the offering of Abel that commanded uh, God's, uh, God's honor, that commanded God's respect, so to say? Just two things for the purpose of this episode. Number one, Abel gave God his best. Now we are learning. We are learning from Abel. With regard to the offering he gave and how God responded. So number one thing we are noticing here is that Abel gave God his best. The first links of his flock and the fat thereof. You can see that in Genesis chapter 4 verse 4. 
Genesis chapter 4 verse 4, Abel gave God his best, that's the first length of his flock and the fat thereof. The Amplified Bible describes his offering as the finest firstborn of his flock and the fat portions. The finest firstborn of his flock and the fat portions. That's what Abel gave. And giving this kind of offering sent a message to God straight away. Offering God this kind of, you know, this kind of offering, you know, giving God this kind of offering, there was a message that sent to God right away. And the message is, God, because you have my highest regard, I'm giving you my very best. That's the way God saw it. That's the way the message was delivered to the throne of God. So Abel was having, was making an offering on earth to God. And the, the offering communicated a message to God on his throne. And the message God saw, by the message God received by reason of the offering of Abel was God. It's like Abel was saying, God, by this offering, I am declaring that because you are my highest regard, you have my highest regard, I am giving you my very best. You have my highest regard, therefore I'm giving you my very, my very best. And the God you know, because he honors those who honor him, he responded by having regard for Abel and his offering. Abel sent honor to God. He declared him first over his life. He gave him the very best. He identified and recognized him as the one who deserves his very best. And God in turn, because he honors those who honor him, he responded by having regard for Abel and his offering. And on the account of his offering, he pronounced him righteous, that is free from sin and his penalty. Hallelujah. He gave God his best. And that's the question you want to begin to ask yourself now. Do you really give God your best? Do you really give God your best? You know, God was complaining against his priests in Malachi. He said they were bringing lame animals to offer to him as sacrifice. He said, offer this to your governors and see if they will receive it. So God was saying, most some of us, the kind of gifts we bring to him, there are gifts that we cannot even offer our governance. Gov- you can't even offer your friends. You can't offer your you can't offer your family members. You can't offer your community leader. You can't offer your pastors. You can't offer anybody you respect. But just because it is God and God, you want, you're not going to see Him physically. You just bring something to Him. You just bring something to him, something that doesn't make sense, something that doesn't look good, something out of somewhere. You just grab it and bring it to him. Say, yeah, it's my offering. No, Abel didn't do that. Abel was very intentional. Abel had the option of giving God some things. He had the option of giving God just some, some of the things, but he did not do that. He looked at his flock, he looked at everything, and he gave God the first links of his flock. And according to that Amplified Bible that we read, he gave him the finest portion, finest firstborn of his flock and the fat portions. And God responded, God sees when you honor him, he will honor you. He said that we honor those who honor me and those who do not honor me, I will lightly esteem. Those who lightly esteem you is going to despise them. Those who despise God is going to lightly esteem them. There is no way you can't you can't dishonor God and expect Him to honor you. It doesn't work that way. A man shall reap whatever he sows. So that's what Abel did. Abel didn't just give God any kind of offering. He took his time. He first of all identified the position God had in his life. He first of all classified God to a department he wanted the first thing Abel did was to declare to himself where does God occupy in my heart where is the place of God where do I place him is God the highest is God my the person that has my highest honor is God the person who has my highest regard is there anything else or anyone else I revere above God no God is number one God is the only one who are who has my highest regard and he deserves my all in all he deserves my very best and he did just that he did just that very very important Abel gave God his best. You want to begin to think about the offerings you have been given so far, all the seeds, all the offering you have been given. You want to begin to think about it. Are they really your best or you just squeeze something in there 
so that you know people will not say you didn't drop anything in the offering box begin to think about that are you giving god your best number two the number two lesson we are learning from Abel regarding the offering he uh, gave to God. He gave his best willingly. It's one thing to give God your best. It's another thing entirely to do it willingly. Some people give God their best, but they give it grudgingly. They are so sad. They murmur, they lament, they grumble. But not Abel. Abel gave God his best and he equally gave God his best willingly. He wasn't compelled. God didn't force him. He offered his best willingly. If you look at Exodus chapter 25, verse 2, Exodus 25, to God instructed Moses to only take his offerings from those who gave it willingly with their hearts. That was an instruction. God wanted Moses to get some offerings from him and for him from the Israelites. God wanted people to bring offering to him. And the instruction, one of the instructions he gave to Moses is make sure these offerings that you are going to collect for me, make sure you collect it from those who are willing to give it willingly with their heart. Take my offerings from those who give it willingly with their heart. With their heart. Not just those who give it like somebody will speak now if I don't give. No. Collect it from those who give it willingly from their hearts. Also, if you look at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 7, 2 Corinthians 9, 7, the Apostle Paul encourages that everyone should give willingly, not grudgingly or out of necessity. Why? Because God loves cheerful givers. God loves cheerful givers. God wants us to give willingly and not grudgingly. Willingly and not grudgingly. Not out of necessity. Not as if something will happen if you don't give. The reason is God loves cheerful givers. So, cheerfulness must accompany your giving if God is going to have respect onto that particular offering. So, Abraham gave his best and he equally gave his best willingly, both to God. Very, very important. Very important that we know that. And that's what I'm going to be. As I begin to close this episode, I'm going to ask you, when last did you offer your best to God? When last did you offer your best to God? When you receive your salary or wages, for instance, do you give God your first and best, that is your tithe and offerings? You have just been paid. You get your salary, you get your wages. Is God the first person that comes to your heart or not? Do you give God your first and best, that's your tithe and offering, or you simply spend all? without remembering your ultimate provider. Somebody provided that thing for you. His name is God, Jairi. Do you just spend all without remembering your ultimate provider? The one who made it possible for you to even earn income in the first place. The one who determines who who lives and who dies. It determines whether you live or die is the Lord. Do you regard such a person, such a person in your life, do you regard such God and making sure you know by making sure you give him the very best when last did you offer your best to god and even when you give offerings do you lament or murmur as if you are being forced do you are you among those who grumble when giving they squeeze their faces they have a frown as if somebody put gun to their heads to come and give do are you among those who who appear as if they are being forced they are being coerced to give are you among those who grumble when given or do you give cheerfully with a heart of gratitude for god's continuous provision because there's nothing you receive that did not come from him john 3 27 a man can receive nothing except from heaven so god is the one who ultimately provides for you if you say no no it's my salary it's my job he gave you that job he can make you jobless it's the lord he gave you that job no matter what you are doing god is the ultimate source of what so even when you enjoy the help of man god is the ultimate source so that's why when you when you give him anything at all you do it cheerfully with a heart of gratitude for his continuous provision you have to learn this from the life of abel learn this from the life of abel and stop making your i mean stop, stop keeping your best from your maker who are you going to give what let me Maybe you should even think about it. Who do you want to give your best to? 
you, you are just keeping it back. You are keeping it back. You are saving it. You are keeping it back. Who deserves your best, if not your maker? Who? Learn this lesson from the life of Abel and stop seeing, stop seeing yourself as, uh, as somebody who is offering something to God when what you are offering is something you cannot even offer to your friends or to your governors. And stop keeping your best from God. Don't do that. Stop keeping your best from your maker. He deserves it. Anything God does not deserve, anything you cannot give to God, I mean, who are you going to give it to? He deserves everything. He, your very life, you hold it to him. So, give your best to God. Lesson one, because he deserves it. Lesson two, give your best to him willingly. That's the only way he can, you can, he can receive it from you. That's the only way he can look at you and commend you. Say, hey, I love your offering and we have respect unto your offering. It's my prayer that the grace to apply these lessons to your life may the Lord release upon you in Jesus' name. So God had respect unto the offering of Abel because he gave his best and he gave that best willingly and God commended him. God decided to honor him for that. It's my prayer that as you become a cheerful giver, as you become someone who gives his best to the Lord, the Lord Almighty himself will have respect unto you and we have respect unto your offerings. We have respect unto your tithe. We have respect unto your seed in the mighty name of Jesus. And because he commended Abel, God Almighty will commend you as well. By reason of your offerings as you give cheerfully going forward in the mighty name of Jesus. That's the word of the Lord for us for this beautiful week. Uh, I want to give opportunity to those who have not surrendered their life to Jesus Christ. This will be the time to do so. You know you are not saved. You're not born again. You don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. You need to do that right away. You really need to do that right away. Because all the offerings of sinners, the abomination to the Lord. If you think you have been giving, making offering, you are paying tight, you are, you know, sowing seed, you are giving, and you are not born again. The Bible says everything you have been doing, the abomination to the Lord. John 9, 31, God hearing all sinners. God cannot even hear you. So it's very important, no matter what you are doing, you want to surrender your life to Jesus Christ. This will be the moment. So say after me if you want to do that. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, I am in need of your saving grace. Please forgive all my sins and wash me in your precious blood. I confess you as my Lord and Savior today. Thank you for saving me. Amen. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, we give you glory, honor, and adoration for your word that you have brought to us once again. We celebrate your majesty. Lord, accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Lord, I want to pray for this, your children. I want to pray, Father, that the ability and the grace, the discipline to give God their best, the discipline to also give it willingly, with joy, with cheerfulness. Lord, release upon this, your children, in the mighty name of Jesus, the grace to offer our best to go release upon us all in the name of jesus and for your children who have decided to surrender their life to jesus christ we pray lord almighty that you accept them in the beloved forgive all their sins wash all their sins away and make them whole in the mighty name of jesus and beginning from now the grace also to be able to give their best to you lord almighty release upon this once in jesus name and as they do that, Lord Almighty, grant them the grace to do it willingly and cheerfully so they don't miss out on their rewards in the name of Jesus. Father, thank you for answering our prayers. We celebrate your majesty and we return all the glory to you. In Jesus' mighty and unfailing name we have prayed. Amen.